we turn our attention to AI and its impacts on banking. That's right. We are diving into the future of banking, where artificial intelligence and digitization are revolutionizing the industry with an enormous transformative power. Deployment of digital asset custody, blockchain and data-driven technologies are just some of the rapidly advancing capabilities of corporate banking. We are now joined by David Lin, Global Head of Corporate Bank at Deutsche Bank, to discuss next generation in banking, the power of AI and digitization for a bank's offering. David, welcome to Cyboss TV. I'm really excited that you're here. Last year, we were talking uh, on Cyboss TV and really building on the conversation of technology. How have things sped up since then? Um, so thank you again for the invitation back. I think there's uh, a lot of advances that are occurring clearly in the topics that you spoke about, the artificial intelligence space, uh, the use of data, uh, and the advancement on blockchain technology. Let's get into artificial intelligence, uh, shall we? It seems to be a, a buzzword of the last few years. I don't see it going away anytime soon. Um, are we talking artificial, artificial intelligence and banking? Is it all, is it all hype? Uh, are there tangible opportunities for the industry right now? So first of all, our, our global research department really believes that artificial intelligence will be the next industrial revolution. So not just in banking, but across the world and industry. So that's a very firm belief as a, a sort of a research institution, as a firm. So clearly there's going to be a lot of further development. Uh, we need to think about some of the developments in laws and regulation. But as a global financial institution, we have just an enormous amount of data across the world, right? So that can be definitely used and harnessed through the artificial intelligence process. So first of all, in areas like our client service area, we can definitely increase speed. We can include roboticization uh, and speed of execution of return to our clients. Uh, we definitely can help with our client advisory processes. If you think about payments, you think about liquidity management and optimization, working capital cycles, uh, custody settlement chains. The power of the technology and the use of that data to really advise our clients is tremendous, right? Uh, we can use it for ourselves in areas of like risk management, credit risk management analysis, operational risk management analysis, and then again for our clients in areas that are, are increasingly important in non-financial risk, so uh, anti-money laundering. As the world becomes much more digital, uh, the requirement to really look at and help our clients with fraud prevention is an increasing, increasing topic, right? Um, so ultimately, the interesting piece will also be, you know, how do we have our artificial intelligence talk to our clients' artificial intelligence? How do, how do we combine that across the, the eco structure? So we're spending a lot of money. Uh, we're looking at a lot, but it can be really a relatively transformational capability for, for a global financial institution with a large amount of data, both in terms of running our own capabilities, but also really taking the next level of client advisory across the space. It's interoperability, as you said, with the AI platforms talking to each other and building on that data. Blockchain, of course, is really contributing to that in a large way. It's a technology that you are really um, focusing on at Deutsche Bank. Can you tell us a little bit more about this? So the distributed ledger technology, which I like that term a little bit better than the blockchain, has been around the financial market and the financial system for quite a while, but it does feel now it's reaching a sort of a, a bit more of a takeoff point. Um, for example, if you look at the amount of tokenized funds that have been issued in the last few months, uh, particularly around US treasuries, where particularly those are a part of a collateral system has really grown exponentially, correct? Um, we continue to look at this space heavily. Uh, we do think that it offers great uh, capabilities, so really on-chain uh, settlement, uh, instantaneous irrevocable atomic settlement allows speed, uh, allows greater use of liquidity, uh, allows greater use of uh, safe settlement and takes out settlement risks, uh, reduces capital consumption, uh, and really optimization to the clients. Um, the growth of virtual assets, uh, not just cryptocurrencies, but non-fungible tokens are, are increasingly really an asset class. Mm -hmm. And clearly young investors around the world see that as an actual asset class in terms of capabilities, right? Um, we will, in the first half of next year, roll out our digital asset custody service uh, in our home market of Germany to start and then across the world, right? That really is the capability to very securely move assets and money across wallets on public and private blockchains. And that really is the foundation to what you need as a capability in terms of using the blockchain. Right. Um, we are involved in a lot of uh, proof of concepts and bond issues around the world in the last six months. So for example, we're just very heavily involved by a bond issue on a tokenized format from one of the German agencies, KFW in Germany, 
That cuts across our investment bank in debt capital markets through to our trustee business and our custody business in the, in the corporate bank. Um, so a lot of art is in this space. Um, we are very involved in the various forms of tokenization of money that will occur, um, whether that's central bank digital currencies, whether that's stable coins, or what we would call sort of the tokenization of commercial bank money or M2 in economic terms, right? And all three of those forms will probably exist. Um, if you think about financial services, money is at one side of every transaction, a, a purchase, an asset, a process, right? So if we're going to really maximize the capability of the blockchain, we need the money side to really interoperability with the, with the other pieces, right? Um, so again, see a lot of advances in this space. Uh, I think now we're reaching a point where there will be a greater capability. Ultimately, as sort of very traditional bank, we see our real role in the world in really connecting the tokenized world through to the fiat money world for our clients globally. So we will have a long-term uh, process where you know that will still be connected. The virtual asset and the and the tokenized world won't exist on its own. It will need to be interoperable with the fiat money and traditional financial system. And that's really where we come in for our clients, whether they're institutions, corporates, multinational companies, are really linking both the the financial asset and the tokenization of money with the fiat money world, right? Yeah. And we're doing a lot of that already, really providing cash management services to digital banks, to virtual asset service providers across the world, linking again, you know, fiat money of today with tokenized systems. Well, speaking of maximizing capabilities, how important are strategic partnerships, joint ventures uh, in this area, or are these capabilities better developed in-house, would you say? So this is a really interesting question, right? So um, we do see the the future of financial services really becoming a much more open, integrated ecosystem, right? Traditionally, banks have had fairly closed processes and closed mm -hmm. because it will become an increasingly uh, open ecosystem across the topics we just discussed, right? So then we really need to say, what do we build within Deutsche Bank in terms of core capabilities, in terms of intellectual property, uh, and in terms of visory capabilities to our clients? But how do we increasingly link those things in to open ecostructures? So really, that will include partnerships with fintechs, uh, a lot of very good capabilities in the world in terms of people we can partner with. And we've been doing that quite a lot globally across lots of different areas. So how do we then build our technology so it's very modular and goes into that open in ecostructure? Um, last week, we, re we launched for our institutional cash management, what we call our uh, brand of DBX products. So DBX uh, flow will cover really the international cross-border payments and SEPA payments, uh, DBX convert, really automated foreign exchange, uh, DBX treasury, maximization of liquidity management, uh, and DBX advisory, really our overall advisory capability. We are in 43 countries in the world. We always think our expertise is really how are those systems and ecosystems, payment rails, developing in India or in Turkey or in Vietnam or in, or in Western Europe, right? And those are developing at different speeds, whether it's the tokenization of money, whether it's instant payments, whether it's open eco-banking system. So how do we advise our, our global clients who are very global with us, whether they're financial institutions, uh, banks, MBFIs, through to large multinational corporations, what they can use in various parts of the world, right? So going back to the main theme, you know, we need to build technology that is very interoperable and we'll have much more of an ecosystem and an open banking system in the world. And that's where we're building things of today, like the DBX platform that can be plugged in to various systems and, and various capabilities. And there's no doubt this cutting edge technology needs to be adopted. That's what Deutsche Bank is doing. But curious how you balance that and still maintain your traditional business lines. So that's the that's the challenge, right? <laughs> yeah. So your traditional business line, you know, is clearly a big part of your business and the main part of your business today while you develop products and capabilities for the future. Um, but really, they're ultimately kind of a journey, right? So you're building the core technology that covers your traditional processing, but also, as I just said, really building the microservices above that in your technology stack that allow you to connect to APIs, that allow you to connect to the, the blockchain as per the custody example I, I created earlier, and then really that interoperability. We talk about the variety of different technologies and how that impacts the bank's offering and, and processing. What will be the decisive factor to be successful here? Um, I think how we link all these things together, right? And how we think about that on a global basis, as I just said. I mean, really, those sort of technologies, uh, regulatory changes, cross-border processes, central bank digital currencies are quite different across the world, right? And at different stages of advancement. So... Ultimately, we are a client-driven business. We really need to understand what's important to our clients in terms of their treasury operations, in terms of their 
financial services to their clients and really provide and develop those technologies that allow them to succeed, right? Ultimately. So that's a complicated world in rapidly changing, whether it's artificial intelligence, whether it's sort of digital assets, blockchain, you know, what are the things that really uh, create solutions for our clients to offer to their clients, right? Um, the world economy is becoming a lot more digitalized, right? If you talk to multinational corporations, clearly a much greater online selling, online processing, and a lot greater automation of treasury and financial services that has to support that. The world will become a lot more 24 seven in terms of, you know, financial services across the world. Uh, so this is a, this is an interesting time, definitely a time where we need to invest, definitely a time where we need to understand our client's problem. And it's definitely a time where we need to develop product suites that help solve those. Uh, and how to really maximize those. Right? So uh, it's definitely a period of transition yeah. in the financial services. And I do see, in the, um, we had a client event last night and I was talking about, we will see, I think, an acceleration of this over the next three to five years because technology is changing so fast uh, and that's changing your client's business models, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and then people have younger and younger customers who are sort of in the digital world, whether it's investing in virtual assets or ordering their holiday or their airline flight online or anything else. So, so we have a sort of uh, decompany between older people and then a very emerging younger class that really lives their life uh, in a very digital fashion. And our clients need to respond to that. Yeah. Well, you need to you need to grow as the generations shift, right? And and as that as that trend continues in the tech space, what advice can you give to those who are really trying to navigate the space? Um, I think you just need to be open minded. We need to build expertise. Um, you know, we need to think uh, out of the box in how we do things and how this technology and things can help us. So, you know, in, the, in a very traditional, um, you know, financial institution, which Deutsche Bank and clearly big global banks are. You know, navigating that speed of change, uh, educating and growing your people uh, and getting people to really, you know, advance and think out of the box, right? And really think how, how can we produce financial services in a very different way than we have done for the last 20 or 30 years. But Finally, David, the theme of this is Cybos is connecting the future of finance. Uh, what are your expectations perhaps on this year in Beijing? Um, I think every Cybos is excellent. I mean, as we discussed, you know, the last couple of days, we get to meet uh, clients, but we get to meet uh, peers. We get to meet experts. We meet, get to meet um, competitors, right? Um, if we think about everything we just discussed, I mean, the financial system is an eco-structure with lots of players. Uh, and if we're really going to use these advances in technology, you need every player involved in that process. Uh, it's not just a singular financial institution that's going to create that, right? So our clients want interconnected processes that go across a range of financial services and a range of financial institutions. Mm -hmm. So uh, the conference is always a fantastic learning experience, right? With uh, both the events and the meetings, right? Uh, and this advance will continue quite strongly over the next two to three years. Well, Damien, it's great to have you back on Cybex TV. Good luck over the next few days. I'm sure you're a very busy man. Good luck with making ever more connections in, in Beijing 2024. And we look forward to catching up with you perhaps next year. Great. Thank you. Uh, that's David Lin, Global Head of Corporate Bank at Deutsche Bank. Thanks again.